there's been a bit of a theme developing for me lately when it comes to buying new graphics cards on launch day. I wake up early in the morning and then I go and queue outside of the shop for about an hour and a half, where invariably I am the first person in the queue to not get my hands on one of the newfangled graphics cards. So this time, I only briefly considered knife battling one of the lucky bastards that actually got their hands on one of these cards, and then I decided to myself, I'm gonna buy something even better. And it's the new GT710. Who saw that coming? A return to the channel of a legend, but this time dressed up with a couple of key upgrades made by Asus. Now, Random Gaming in HD did actually do a video on this exact card earlier this week, but when I saw one in stock at the shop where I queued for an RTX 3070, I just couldn't not get one. But with that, let's, let's open it up. Um... The packaging is very plain, as is always the case with GT710s. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much just the graphics card that you're getting. I can already, through the packaging, see that this is a real beauty. It's actually pretty hefty for a GT710. I actually have an original one lying here that we'll compare it to just now, but it's got a nice heatsink on it, which will be good for overclocking. And there's some pretty awesome looking uh, power delivery caps over there. So Asus really put some work into this thing. Now the first major upgrade is the fact that it now has four HDMI ports. Look at that. It does mean that you can't actually use it as a low profile graphics card anymore, which is pretty funny. If you compare it to the rear IO of the original GT710, it is a major upgrade. As you can see here though, the, the VGA port does give you that flexibility to have a, a low profile card, but still, that's pretty awesome. So that's the first big upgrade. And then the second one is the memory that it's using. So it still uses two gigs of VRAM, which is not a huge amount, but they did upgrade it from GDDR3 on this version to GDDR5. So we now have two gigs of GDDR5, which is kind of madness for this card really. So I'm excited to see how it performs. It's always exciting getting another GT710 into the shop, especially one that's as beautifully voluptuous as this one. Asus really outdid themselves with this bad boy. So what we're gonna do in today's video is we're gonna just check out the straight up gaming performance of this new GT710 to remind ourselves how this beast performs in gaming. And then I'm gonna overclock it because that was the part of the original GT710 that really impressed me. It really had the soul of Der Bauer in it. It overclocked like a little demon. So hopefully the new one overclocks a bit better. It may not, but we'll get into that later in the video. But getting back to just the straight up gaming benchmarks, the system that I tested this GPU with has an i9-10850K in it. I really wanted to find a CPU that matches the performance of the GT710, and then it's got 32 gigs of DDR4 3200 MHz in it. So with that, let's see how much of the GT710 stinks up the house while gaming. For those of you that watched the video that Random Gaming in HD posted earlier this week on the new GT710, these terrible gaming benchmarks shouldn't come as a surprise to you. It's not a gaming GPU as we can tell, but I was really impressed by how well Dota handles this GPU. I mean, we're getting like 48 frames per second average at 1080p, which is, which is impressive. So if you're a Dota player, you don't really need more than a GT710. You don't need to splurge on, on high-end gaming hardware. GTA 5 didn't do as well. Um, yeah, this, this, is, this is not a playable result at all. This is at 720p at the lowest settings, and we're not even getting 20 frames per second. Uh, moving over to Rainbow Six Siege, that also really struggled. It doesn't like having a GT710 pushing those frames. Fortnite was 
also very unplayable. Although look at that, I got a couple of kills while gaming with a GT710 on Fortnite. There's something really weird about gaming with the GT710. It introduces a huge amount of input lag. Like it, it, it's, it's weird, but it's not just the low frame rates that are an issue. It's like the GPU needs some time to process everything. So there's, there's some definitely noticeable input lag there. I think the funniest part of the GT710 benchmarks for me is that CPU utilization. <laughs> it barely ever goes above 10%. But now we get to the exciting part of the video. How does this new GT710 overclock? Because that's, it's party piece. It's really crazily good at overclocking just when you look at kind of percentages gained in performance. Now with this new GT710, it went surprisingly poorly compared to the old one. Uh, when it comes to the core clock, the max core frequency I could get stable was 350 megahertz. Just a quick note from editor David here. I meant to say plus 350 megahertz, referring to the MSI afterburner overclock. The actual core frequency was sitting closer to 1293 megahertz. And the same goes for the old GT710 as well. I meant plus 400. Anyway, with that, let's get back to the video. Uh, anything above that and it would just crash out of the game within three seconds of loading into the, the CSGO benchmark. That's not as good as the 400 megahertz we could get out of the out of the original GT710. So this could be down to silicon lottery, but hopefully that new GDDR5 can overclock a bit better. You know, maybe we can get some more performance there. Unfortunately, that overclocks even worse. Those Samsung modules gave me a max extra overclock of about 150 megahertz, which is not great compared to the 300 extra megahertz of the, um, of the previous version of the GT710. Yeah, and the thing is, the, the memory overclock was the part that actually had the biggest positive gain in performance for the GT710. So yeah, it meant that our performance gained in CSGO from just stock to max overclock is, yeah, it's, it's not much higher. We went from 21 frames per second to 25. Whereas with the old version of the GT710, we got like a 64% performance increase. So that's actually really disappointing. Um, I think I just kind of lost the silicon lottery with this new GT710. And it seems like those Samsung memory modules are already pushed to their limit. Uh, they, they don't want to overclock any more than that. So there we go, there are the results. The new GT710 is a worse overclocker than the old one, which is which is a bit unfortunate. <laughs> and that brings me to the end of the video. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section below if you want me to compare this new GT710 to my newly acquired GT730. I'd be interested to see how those two compare. Let me know if you would be as well. With that, if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, like the video and all of that stuff. And until the next video, bye-bye.